if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll receive the reward on that prophet's life. And so tonight, I want you to hear me say this. I've taught this on Wednesday night, but I think it's important to reiterate this as we grow in this. He's been a pastor, but his primary gift is the role of a prophet. And that grace is different from a pastor's gift. That grace is different from an apostolic gift. That grace is different than a te- he will teach, he will preach. But, but he will also share what he feels like God is showing him. And I want you to, as God begins to minister and move tonight, just keep your heart open. How many know God can move through an open vessel? How many have room for God in your heart tonight? So would you make my friend and my brother in Christ welcome as he comes to preach. Tell Jeremiah and tell Miss Morgan and the babies you love them too. Make them feel welcome. We're honored to have you tonight. Make yourself at home. Love you. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we bring you greetings tonight from Charlotte, North Carolina, from the Altar Global. I want to honor my wife. Two of our girls are here. I want to honor Pastor Kevin and Devin and the leadership team. Can we give the whole leadership team here just a big round of applause? I take, I take each assignment that the Lord gives me uh, very seriously. This is not another gig. It's not another stop on my travel itinerary. I really do believe that God has a word in this house tonight. That if we were to come back tomorrow night, it would be a different word. You have seven different messages to seven different churches in the book of Revelation. I don't believe God says the same thing to every house. For those of you who want to grow in the prophetic, I want to encourage you to pay the price to labor in prayer and fasting. To really ask God for a burden for the people that he's sending to you. Amen. I'm going to preach a message tonight called Exposing Vulture Culture. Where did you get this from? A dream that I had this past week. Never preached this anywhere before. To tell you the truth, I've never even heard of vulture culture. So we're going to look at the Word of God. I'm going to share with you what I believe the Lord is saying. Because we're in the New Testament, I'm giving this in the spirit of 1 Thessalonians 5. I want to encourage you to test this, to weigh this, to judge this. You have the responsibility as the body of Christ not to swallow hook, line, and sinker what every prophet says. So I'm inviting you into what I believe that the Lord has for us tonight. Amen. Would you just as you're seated, we just lift up your hands to the Lord just one last time. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we honor you, we love you in this place. God, I just continue to lift up my voice in this nation. Lord, that you would raise up messengers in every sphere of society. God, I pray that you would raise up men and women in this hour who would scale the mountains of influence, not so that they could be seen or heard, but so that we could plant the cross of Jesus Christ on top of every mountain. Holy Spirit, I ask tonight that you would incline our ears to what you're saying in this hour. Lord, we pray for a prophetic anointing to break every yoke. Lord, I bind the spirit of witchcraft in this room. 
over this city. It's causing many to question their future, to look back on the past and wonder if anything they did mattered. I said, I break the power of witchcraft in this place. It's causing anyone in this room to question what lies ahead and to wonder if what you've done in the past even mattered. Lord, we pray for deliverance tonight in the name of Jesus. If you feel that in your spirit, I want you to stand. The Lord is breaking the spirit of witchcraft. Some of you are questioning what lies ahead. And you're wondering if what you even did in the past mattered. I'm identifying a spirit to you so that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. All right, stretch out your hands to the people around you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we break the power of witchcraft off of every mind. We command every curse to be reversed. In Jesus' name, every word that's been spoken over you, we command confusion to go right now in Jesus' name. We release clarity in the name of Jesus. We declare that voices of clarity are coming forth in this nation in the midst of a confused culture. Lord, let them be loosed tonight in Jesus' name. You can be seated. On Wednesday of this past week, I had a dream. I've been having dreams since I was nine years old. My mom had a dream when I was in her womb to name me Jeremiah. The prophecy that she received was very specific about my life. Since around nine years old, I've been dreaming every night, several dreams a night, still learning how to steward the gift that the Lord has given me. When I began to travel heavily around 25 years old, I noticed that when the Lord would assign me to places, there's a difference between being invited somewhere and being assigned. I want to encourage you, if you're called to travel ministry, say no more than you say yes. Jeremiah was very clear in chapter 23 that there are people traveling that God never sent. And there are people preaching that God never spoke to. And yet there's another group who are just peddling and stealing other people's words and acting like it's their own, which we're going to get into tonight. So just go ahead and buckle your seatbelt. But I realized as I waited upon the Lord, Peter says that prophets were holy men who were moved along as they got invited. No. They were moved along as the Holy Spirit spoke to them. So it's okay if you don't have a New Year's word because God hasn't spoke to you. It's okay that you don't have something to keep the email list going and for people to be... It's okay to wait on the Lord until He fills your belly with a real and true word of the Lord. It's okay if you don't want to get into cookie, fortune cookie prophesying. It's okay if you don't want to hand out lollipops and cotton candy to the body of Christ. 
It's okay. Is this okay? It's okay if you don't want to mimic and copy and parrot what you heard on social media. It really is okay to get in the secret place, to allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be poured out on you. It's really okay to move beyond spontaneous prophecy to a revelatory realm of the Spirit that has weight, that has substance that when you speak something thunders something shifts something shakes we're not used to this kind of prophesying anymore but I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus Christ that voices are arising in this nation that have been in the wilderness for far too long and they're not afraid of men they fear God they're not here for the offering and the applause they've been sent from above I want to strengthen and comfort and encourage you in a generation that is so in a hurry to get nowhere. To seeking validation and identity from how many likes and how many followers. I tell you, we are more addicted to an algorithm than the voice of the Holy Spirit. I I can't shut it down. I've got to put something out there to feed them. So in my dream earlier this week, I found myself here at Redemption to the Nations and this place was a large eagle's nest. And in the dream, I saw pastors Kevin and Devin like eagles and they were feeding many baby eagles fresh catch. Massive eagle's nest here, feeding fresh revelation in the Word of God. There was an anointing for prayer. There was an anointing for character pouring out. The next thing that I saw was a spirit of robbery and thievery break into the house. See, I'm here to declare the Word of the Lord, but I'm here to warn you and caution you. Yes, God is raising up an eagle's nest in this city and even in this nation and the nations. But Satan is always looking to counterfeit the authentic. He's always looking to mimic and copy the true. Thievery robbing spirit came in. The next scene in the dream, I found myself in a vulture's nest. I went from an eagle's nest here to a vulture's nest where they were passing around old, regurgitated, second-hand food to the people. And I heard the voice of the Lord say to me in this dream, I want you to catch this. He said to me, Cancel culture is a worldly spirit, but vulture culture is a religious spirit, and I want you to expose it in my body. Cancel culture is a worldly spirit where we're just trying to shut down and push out anything and everything. But vulture culture isn't about canceling. It's about duplicating and looking real when you're a fraud. Lord said to me in the dream, Matthew 24. So if you have in your Bibles, I want you to go to Matthew 24. I'm going to begin reading in verse 24, Matthew 24, 24. And as you're 
turning there, my 12th book called The Altar just came out last week, January 18th. They're available in the lobby. Lou Engel wrote the foreword. Pastor John Kilpatrick wrote the special introduction. Many of you know my story over the last two years of political involvement, being on a large national stage, and the journey that I have made in the course of my life. If you're looking for a real, raw, transparent, what's happened to me, where I'm going, what I believe the Lord is saying to the body of Christ through it, I want to encourage you to grab that out in the lobby. Matthew 24, 24, are you ready? For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told you in advance. If therefore they say to you, Behold, he is in the wilderness, do not go forth. Or behold, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe them. For just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And then I want you to underline verse 28. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Underneath it, I want you to write, wherever the church is, the eagles gather. Wherever there's a corpse, wherever there is a dead, dry, religious system, there the vultures will gather. But wherever the ecclesia is, Wherever there's a gathering of people, wherever there's a house that recognizes man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. He's raising up a people who hunger and crave for the rhema. We need the rhema word of the Lord. What is that? We need the prophetic spirit and the unction of the Holy Spirit to invade and interject in our normal course of life so that if we've got a sermon series planned and God says, no series, I want you to be seasonal... I need you to shift gears in a moment's notice and you're not going to pour out of your gifting and your intellect. You're actually going to have to pour out of your prayer life. But I fear we don't know how to change gears in the church because we spend more time on pomp and politics and protocol and there's no power because we don't know how to pray. I'm working on being plain. How am I doing? Lord, I want to be in those conversations at work where all of a sudden I'm aware you're speaking not last year, not tomorrow. You're speaking right now. Folks, we need present day revelation and wisdom to break into this nation, into conversations. We need the word of the Lord to run swiftly in boardrooms and school systems and at meetings. We need to hunger and desire, Lord, make this place an eagle's nest. Oh, there's something about being fresh and being open to what the Holy Spirit wants to do that drives religion mad. Because religion is bent on what's predictable because it's all about control. 
It scares religious people when you say God could do a new thing. He could do things our eyes can't see, our ears haven't heard, our minds see. We pray these scriptures, but what happens when they manifest now? Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. God is saying wherever the the church is, there the eagles will gather. It's launched me on a search last week, vulture culture, trying to understand what the Lord was really saying to this group of believers. So I began to take a look at the difference between vultures and eagles. Let me talk to you about vultures for a minute. Vultures are birds that have developed a gut. Can you say gut? Gut. They've developed a gut that allows them to eat that which is dead and not get sick. A vulture is a bird who has developed a gut that allows them to eat that which is dead and not get sick. I heard the Lord say to me, I'm coming to do a gut check on my body. If you're a member of this church, if you're even visiting, I believe the Lord is coming to do a literal gut check. What's a gut check? It's an evaluation or a test of a person's priorities and appetite. A gut check is an evaluation. It's an examination. Jesus loves examinations. He loves evaluations. He loves the gift of repentance. He loves atmospheres that are so hot and are so fresh that you have to check whether you're even in the faith or not. Oh, Jesus loves bullseyes. He loves the cutting of the hearts. He loves the glory realm where your only choice is to hit the floor or hit the door. Oh, he loves a realm of revival where it really is revival or riot. Folks, I'm talking about the word of the Lord that thunders, that shakes the trees in Lebanon. I'm talking about esteeming and honoring the word of the Lord once again. I'm talking about the fear of the Lord, the holiness of God. I'm not talking about handing out the word of the Lord like a common thing. I'm talking about restoring the sacred of the word of the Lord back to this generation where when the Lord speaks we tremble when the Lord speaks we bow our knees when the Lord speaks we give him our carnality and we say Lord not my will but yours be done I'm not talking about this prophetic stuff that just comes and confirms carnality I'm talking about a true prophetic spirit that separates the holy from the profane. I'm talking about messengers of righteousness rising up in the nation that will teach the people the difference between good and evil. The difference between that which is worldly and that which is holy. The difference between a spirit of compromise no we should not be looking for power to heal the sick when we can't keep our hands off our boyfriend and girlfriend we, we've just allowed this pollution and this compromise and this wishy-washy counterfeit And I'm prophesying to you, even as the scriptures say he's separating the sheep from the goats, God is separating the vultures from the eagles. You are going to see the difference 
between men and women who pay the price and actually have a burden of the word of the Lord versus those who are just looking for social status and promotion and have an agenda. And it's His great love that's coming to expose all of this. Gut check. Vultures have a perverted gut. It allows them to consume what they should be vomiting up. Apparently all you got to do is type amen. Free upgrade, free promotion, free house, free car, double this, double that, type amen, and it's here now. It's this instant gratification, spirit of the age. It's delusional. There is mass deception sweeping the body of Christ right now. And I believe the Spirit of God is crying out in the earth, but He's also calling redemption to the nation saying, I want you to get ready to vomit out anything that's not fresh, anything that's not hot, anything that's not born from the place of prayer, I want it out of here. One of my favorite things about Azusa Street, William Seymour, many of you know he'd put a bucket on his head. He didn't care if he looked like a fool. He would wait on God until the Lord would speak. There'd be times when the Lord would call him to travel and he'd have to go. And other itinerant ministries would come in and try to take over the meetings. Here's real accounts. If the guy, the joker, the itinerant, if he started preaching in the flesh, you can look this up. The intercessors would start groaning so loudly. Oh, this is not of God. Oh, they would drown out the preacher's nonsense. Oh, so stop liking their posts and start deleting them as a friend. No, we just want another lick. We just, we want the cotton candy and I call them tickle me Elmo prophecies. We, we are drunk in this generation. We are so full of so much candy that now in the days when God wants to serve the real meat, the real word that's going to burn in your bones like a fire, we don't even have an appetite for it. Lord, I want to be hooked up and in tune with your spirit. I want to have a spirit of discernment. People ask me all the time, Jeremiah, why don't you just put online who's false and who's true? I've asked the Lord that, Lord, why don't you just make it plain? Like if the guy is preaching and he's having an affair on his wife, why don't you just strike him dead? Then people could know he's in compromise and he's a liar. The Lord said to me, I will never rob my body from their calling to discern. You mean I, I actually have to get in tune? Yes, you are a sheep who has been given a grace to hear his voice. So Lord, I'm asking even in this place that you would tune our ears into the frequency of your voice. And Lord, I'm just asking that you would help us to detect the fake, the fraudulent. And again, folks, I'm talking more than just, oh, a wrong prophecy. I'm talking a wrong spirit. There, there, I, I, I'm detecting a spirit as I travel in this nation that's trying to convince people who are the real deal that you're crazy. I'm meeting people who are 
as authentic as I've ever met. But yet the noise around them tries to convince them you need a little bit more pollution in there. You need a little bit more compromise there. You need a little bit more unity there where now we're in bed with Jezebel calling it unity. Vultures. They're attracted to dead, dry religious systems. They flock to feed on men who once moved in the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, but they've lost it because they don't know how to pray anymore. Eagles are attracted to the living, active word of the Lord that flows in houses where men and women are actually paying a price for the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you're there in Matthew 24, we just read 24 through 28, just flip over to chapter 25. I'm gonna try to say it in a different way. I'm just being faithful to what the Lord put on my heart for tonight. To tell you the truth, I had a completely different message before the snowstorm. But I am always open, Lord, what do you wanna say to this group of people? So I wanna try to say it another way. Matthew 25, one through, 13. The foolish virgins are the vultures, and the wise virgins are the eagles. I want to try to read it to you in a little bit of a different context and see if this might help. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were vultures, and five of them were eagles. For when the vultures took their lamps, they took no oil in them. But the eagles took oil in flasks along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight there was a shout, Behold, the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the vultures said to the eagles, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the eagles answered, saying, No, there will not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the religious system and buy some for yourself. While they were going away wheeling and dealing, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went out with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut. Later the other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered and said to them, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day or the hour. The vultures have to go buy or steal their oil from a dead religious system, but the eagles have established a history in God and refuse to share their oil. I'm going to challenge a little bit of your paradigm or your theology. I am all about sharing oil. But one of the things that I believe COVID-19 exposed the need of was to rip your feeding tube from a pulpit and challenge the body, it's time for you to go get your own oil. And what we found in America, and I'll just say, say this, I've been to 24 states during the pandemic. 
I'm a guy who never stopped traveling all throughout the pandemic. What I discovered was the Lord was up to something in his people. He was challenging them, honor men and women of God, but stop worshiping them. Come and receive what the Lord has for you, but you are called. You have been empowered, your inheritance. I'm telling you, I believe that the blood of Jesus bans feeding to Christianity. I believe it is a violation of the blood covenant to purposely seek out prophets for a word from the Lord when you have been given the Holy Spirit who is called to lead you. And why is it awkward in here? It's called responsibility. We have a responsibility as the people of God. Preachers are not going to hold your hand on judgment day. Mommy and daddy's religion isn't going to work during COVID. And so we just had a massive pop quiz in 2020. Surprise! And I don't know whether we failed. I don't know whether we passed. I have a gut feeling that in 2022, we're being given one of the same tests, another opportunity to really discern what God is trying to do in this nation. Share the oil, but here's, I'm going to be honest. I believe we are moving into days in the earth where the most loving thing we can do for people is tell them, go get your own oil. I believe God is exposing ministries and churches who have no oil. They've got people, they've got buildings, they've got programs, but they've got no oil. It's Simon the sorcerer reincarnate. He was a vulture. Simon the sorcerer tried to pay with money through a drive-through experience what Peter and John as eagles had paid for with their lives because they had been with Jesus. You see a clash there between a vulture who went to the conference and paid the registration fee and now thinks he's legit because he spent one weekend with God in the clear. Meanwhile, his lifestyle would say differently. Check. I went to the conference. I paid the money. I honored the man of God. The prophet came. I gave him an offering. Bam, I'm good with God. No, if real prophets are operating in the body of Christ, what they stir up inside of you is a hunger to hear God for yourself. Hello. No, no, it's not this codependency they don't want to tell you the truth because they're afraid God won't take care of them but my God is a provider my God has seen me through the darkest of days I'm not for sale I don't go to the highest bidder neither should you Folks, don't fall short. Don't settle for vulture culture. God is sowing a word, a revelation into this body. It's time for the eagles to eat. Because as we heard this morning, folks, you better get ready to soar. I was sitting there this morning gripped. Oh God, if you're calling this place to the nations, I pray that they're eating the right nutrients so that we don't have more shooting stars because we need shining stars. 
We need less people with giftings rising to the top only to see their character tear down what they've built. Just reading, uh, literally, just, just yellow notepad. <laughs> God said to me, I am dealing with a shoplifting spirit in my body. The vultures are plagiarizing and parroting what the true voices have paid the price for. There are too many pawn shop ministries in America who are peddling stolen goods and second-hand revelation they never purchased in prayer. I am dealing with a shop lifting spirit in my body. The vultures are plagiarizing and parroting what the true voices who have paid the price are saying. There are too many pawn shop ministries who are peddling stolen and second-hand revelation they never purchased in prayer. I'm telling you, we're living in a generation who knows the protocol. They know the politics. They have the look. They wear the Jordans. They pay the dress people. They have it all going on at the expense of a bankrupt interior life. And so if God is coming tonight to do a gut check... And if appetite really dictates the direction of our lives, the Spirit of the Lord is asking this house, what are you hungry for? He's asking Jeremiah Johnson, what are you hungry for? Are you just going to settle for borrowed, second-hand are you going to continue to live vicariously through people on Spotify and YouTube? Folks, we have forfeited so much creativity, so much innovation. God, we need voices, not echoes. Lord, we need men and women who are going to rise up in every sphere of society with ideas, creative strategies that no one has ever heard before. So I want to lift up my voice in this generation and I want to call you higher. I want to raise the bar. I don't want to let you settle for baby food when God has a destiny for your life that's so much greater than kiddie pool Christianity. Oh, I want to contend. I want to labor. I wept in my house two nights ago for four hours saying, God, where are the messengers with a burden? Lord, when are we going to get tired of the cookie cutter? The nepotism. The echo chambers where we just look like and act like and talk like and regurgitate. Man, what an opportunity we had during COVID two years for people to get fresh revelation. And most people just sat on their butt and just started preaching the book they wrote in 2020 and 2022. Because we settled for far less than what God gave us an opportunity for. We bowed to inferior pleasures and other lovers. I want to call a generation out of boredom. I want to call a generation off the fence. You're not safe right now in this nation just hanging out. You need to get around voices and people that shake your cage. I thank God for a man and woman of God here where the lukewarm are not safe in this house. 
I said the lukewarm aren't safe here because they're going to encounter something that's real, something that's active. They're going to run into the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit that breaks yokes. See, we're about to see demons cast out of people like never before. They are coming to our meetings all over America. We are casting the devil out of more people than ever. Why? It's the anointing, not the gifting that breaks yokes. It's not talent. It's not looks. Folks, you can't dress your way into what I'm talking about. You you can't dress this up. God is saying, what's the interior life look like on the inside of you? I want to start landing the plane by just sharing out of my own personal journey. As a 25-year-old, the Lord released me very early on to preach all over this nation with names that we would all recognize. I would go to conferences, and on average, I'd be the youngest speaker by 25 years. I often joked with men. I was on platforms. They were old enough to be my grandpa. And then here's this young guy, Jeremiah Johnson. And so as a young guy, you wrestle, you look on, you hear their stories, you're intimidated by their revelation. I'm thinking, man, these guys are, they have more life they've lived than I, I'm even old. So you have a choice in those moments. Am I going to be an echo or am I going to be a voice? See, we have gifted men and women of God all over this nation. And as I've been doing the conference and I've been around, one of the things that has deeply burdened me in this nation is the mesmerization of people toward prominent figures in the body of Christ. In many cultures, we have gone beyond honor to worship. And we clamor to people that have powerful gifts and people fall down their miracles. They can preach the pain off the wall. They can call out social security numbers. I mean, we, we have the, in America... And so I'm around these men and women of God over the years and I see so many people get around them. And rather than be true to who God has called them to be, they end up believing that I have to look like, act like, and talk like them to make it onto the big scene. And so then we have our fire tunnels. I said it. And then we have our impartation lines. And we're going to have mighty men and women of God lay hands on everyone. And we're all going to fall down and just get what they get. These men and women of God, they can impart a gift to us. Gift of preaching, gift of leadership, gift of prophesying. Half of them, I say, they can knock the funk off of you for a couple of weeks. You just just get your shot. Oh, I got clarity now. But here's the truth. What is sustaining the gifts that they have is their personal history in God. I've not walked out of very many meetings in my life, but I walked out of one last year where the preacher was laying hands on people for maturity. Folks, you can't give anyone maturity. (laughs) 
Brother, what are you saying? I'm saying honor the men and women of God. Celebrate them. Thank God for them. But don't miss the point. God sent you an individual who he gifted, who paid a price to encourage you to go pay your own. Folks, it's, it's, it's been to my great heartbreak. I started asking these fathers, why do you guys only tell miracle stories? When are you going to tell horror stories? When are you going to tell people you don't walk with heaven on earth until you go through hell on earth. I'll solve it real quick. It doesn't sell. People don't applaud. They don't want it. But I'm telling you, God wants to offer this generation the real deal, authentic, the very DNA of Christ. And he's coming to do a gut check tonight saying no more vulture culture. I'm going to teach you how to soar like an eagle, but you've got to get a right appetite. Oh, tell the story, Rodney Howard Brown. Don't worry. I've talked with him. We're friends. And folks, they're, they're enamored. You know, his daughter died in their home. Fibromyalgia. You know, these A.A. A. Allen and these John G. Lake and these Smith. I, I, I feel we read revival history looking for the talking points and fail to really realize the price that they paid to be raised up as a voice. My contention is in charismania, if we learn the price they paid for what they have, we wouldn't run down to the altar, we'd run out the door. This is why... Leonard Ravenhill said, everyone wants my mantle, but no one wants my sackcloth and ashes. See, I, I want to see voices, folks. Oh, but I want to see men and women who are willing to slay a lion and a bear before they want to slay Goliath. I don't know what it is about this generation where we are obsessed with lights and don't realize if we don't stop looking at pornography, the very lights we desire is the very lights that are going to expose you. See, I, I feel we need mothers and fathers. I mean real mothers and fathers that are going to tell people you are not ready yet. You don't use ministry to heal. No, we need to sit and allow the physician to heal our hearts so we don't become addicted to ministry. Oh, I want to see people win in marriage. I want to see godly people raised up who love their kids. Lord, I just pray that you would expose vulture culture in America. Oh, that just eats people up and spits them out and is on to the next gifted individual. Oh, well, David had an affair with Bathsheba. Stop using sin in the Bible to excuse your own. No, 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 no. The, the sin in the Bible was never meant to encourage you in yours. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
In all passages, Timothy, Titus, all of them that have to do with leadership in the New Testament has zero to do with gifting. It has everything to do with character. See, folks, I'm ready for altar calls for character and holiness. And Lord, deal with this sin in me. Lord, raise up voices who have been faithful in the little. But folks, let me just go there for one minute. What if that has nothing to do with bigger visibility? What if faithful in the little and he'll entrust you with the big is actually talking about eternity? What if your faithfulness in the secret has nothing to do with your desires to get a microphone and preach? Lord, help us. God, raise up a healthy, vibrant church. Lord, raise up an eagle culture. See, I preach so much about the end times and I run into people, it's like they have every end time chart memorized. They have every, and I'm preaching messages like, hey, if Jesus is returning, how you treat your wife matters. I just, I don't think this generation is interested in the pre-trib, post-trib, seals and bowls debates. I see people believing he's coming again, but I need to know it matters how I treat my kids. I need to know if he's coming again, my finances, and if I'm really sowing into the age to come, that matters. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that some of us are getting delivered tonight. I need a prophecy, brother. Shut up. That's what they say to me. Quit preaching. Just start prophesying. Shall we? But let me tell you the truth. A prophecy does not begin your promotion. It begins your process. And the bigger the destiny, the bigger the process. So who wants a good big word? You ready for the cross? You ready for the warfare? See, my wife left the, left the meeting. She, she'll hear it, but I, I just thank God for a wife when I travel and come off the road. She's the most unimpressed person ever. In my face all the time. I don't care if they call you prophet. I don't care how much money you made. If you don't love me and the kids, none of it matters. See, the, the flow, oh, the man of God, oh, people treat me better than you do. Thank God for a voice, a wife. Oh, I'm just believing for a spouse that's going to make me happy. Just go ahead and flush that delusion down the toilet. You're looking for a spouse who's going to make you holy, who's going to get up in your business, who's not going to let, oh, I'm just looking for a spiritual father. No, you're looking for a sugar daddy who's going to give you some opportunity. Stop. When you've got real spiritual parents, oh, Maybe your experience has been better than mine. I remember being 27. I just preached to 5,000 people. The power of God. Oh, my gosh. Just, I remember laying in bed that night just thanking God that he still talks today. Lord, thank you that you didn't write a book and then lose your voice. 
But I came up underneath spiritual fathering, true story. When I got off the platform, I was crossing the threshold of my hotel room and my phone rang. It wasn't good job, great job, credible revelation, credible words of knowledge. Hello? Yes, this is, you're not letting that get to your head right. You haven't forgotten where you came from, right? You haven't forgotten that the most important thing about you is not your ministry, it's your marriage and family. Oh, Lord, for every voice that you raise up in this nation, I'm praying that he would release the real spirit and power of Elijah. I'm praying for iron sharpening iron. I'm praying that, Lord, you give us voices and people in our lives that aren't going to tell us what we want to hear. They're going to tell us what we need to hear. It's in my house two nights ago and the Lord said to me, I am restoring the sacred desk in America. God is restoring the sacredness of handling his word. In my house, this phrase came to me. You can look it up on the internet. Fools rush into places where angels fear to tread. Lord says, I'm dealing with the spirit of foolishness in this generation who wants to know what the quickest way to the platform is. God, raise up fathers. Do you have a spiritual parent? that you can at least run things by. See, what I've noticed as I've traveled is we've got great people in their 50s and 60s, perhaps all over the nation, and young people don't want to give them the time of day because they don't have a big platform. And so we have an entire generation of capable, able Men and women that have fought the wars that have been faithful for decades that young people just don't want to listen to because you don't have a blue check mark. God is dealing a gut check in those areas. I believe the Lord is saying to some of you, the people you need in your life the most, you cut off in a former season. And today I'm releasing the ministry of reconciliation and it's called humble yourself. Do you want to be right or do you want the relationship? Just lift up your hands with me for a minute. We're almost done. If you have a prayer language, just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm just asking, Lord, there's seed that you're throwing out all over this room. Lord, there's arrows that you're releasing that are hitting different hearts and different parts. Lord, we ask that you would raise up the eagles at redemption to the nations. Lord, I'm asking for holy appetite. Lord, I'm asking for hunger pains like never before. Lord, I release a create, creative, authentic, one of a kind, dynamic anointing over this house. I release a dynamic, one of a kind, the most anointed you is you over your life. I free you from the disappointment and the delusion today of chasing after someone else's mantle and I invite you tonight to go get your own. Lord, no more drive through, no more shortcuts. Come on.
come, pour it out. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Stir up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Lord, mold me, shape me, use me. Cry out, cry out. Come on, he's dealing with a celebrity spirit in America. Raise up voices in the wilderness. Crying out, prepare the way of the Lord. All eyes on Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. We pray for a fresh anointing, Lord. Fill up the prayer rooms again. Release a travail over your body, O oh God. Lord, where are the messengers? Oh, break up fallow ground, Lord. Come on, 30 more seconds, press. Press, get your own oil. Get your own oil. You can't transfer it. You can't get a handout. I'm giving you a hand up tonight. I'm telling you the truth in love. More, Lord, more, Lord, more, Lord. I'm telling you to a people that press, God will pour it out. Fresh anointing on this house, Lord. Oh, something different. New songs. New ideas, new curriculum, new strategy, new insight, new revelation, a new paradigm. I'm changing your paradigm. Come on, we've got to press. We've got to labor. Come on, you've got to pray until you can pray. We've got to break into that other realm tonight. Come on, he's working something inside of you tonight. There's a spirit of perseverance in the room. There's a spirit of endurance in the room. I'm going to train you, says the Lord. I'm training you up. I'm training this body up to become an army, says the Lord. I'm dealing with the cruise ship in this nation. I see warships. I see warships. Get off the cruise ship. Get away from the buffet. Lord, raise up warriors, not wimps. Lord, deal blows to entitlement. We don't deserve anything. Mark us tonight, God, for eternity.
Raise up voices. I'm going to pull out arrows out of my quiver, says the Lord. I've been preparing men and women in this nation in the wilderness for such a time as this. The unpopular are, are about to become popular. The popular are about to become unpopular. I'm moving amongst the lampstands in this nation. I am evaluating, says the Lord. I am putting my people on notice. No more games. that you would release the fear of who you are once again would bring back messages on stewardship the Lord's telling you to press keep press I'm, I'm sensing in the atmosphere like a funk is breaking off of people. The Lord is delivering you from vain imaginations. The Lord is delivering you from striving and jealousy, trying to be someone else that God never called you to be. Thank you so much for joining us today. I pray that the message that you just received challenge you and encourage you. I do want to go into a time of prayer, but before I do that, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a one-time gift into our ministry. Uh, there's going to be a number pop up on your screen, a link in the comment section, or if you're desiring to do something further, you know, so many people around the world desire to participate with the Ultra Global Movement. We'd love to give you an opportunity to do that. That link is also going to be down in the comment sec section, being a part of our partner family. Let's pray now. God, thank you for those who have watched today who you've refreshed and challenged and encouraged. Lord, we lift up the prayer requests. We lift up the gifts, the partners that are even joining right now. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the earth. You're readying your bride for your coming. You're bringing in a harvest of souls. And Lord, you're touching even the prayer requests being offered right now. We just ask all these things in the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Thank you so much.